Wow, I'm so glad I'm in the shade. It's pretty hot out today. Maybe I'll have a picnic later. People over there are having a... Uh-oh. Dr. Romano, what are you up to? Hi, how are you? I'd like to go over a really good question for the DAT involving Estes. This is a question that's going to involve many, many concepts. So pull up a chair and this problem, one problem can encapsulate a good 10 questions on the DAT. Wonderful. I have a what friend wanna, Esther. What I want to do is to show three potential reactions where we can make an ester. I'm going to take a carboxylic acid and react it with an alcohol. And I simply split off water. You take the OH from the acid and the H off the alcohol, split off water, and you form your ester. Another way I can do it is to take an acyl halide, this being propanoyl, propanoyl chloride with methyl alcohol. Previously, we did methyl alcohol with propanoic acid. And I'm going to split off HCl. And I put the OCH3 on by releasing HCl. And once again, you make the same methyl ester. Finally, if you took propanoic acid with diazomethane, you would simply knock off the N2, which is a great leaving group, and then envision the CH2 combining with the H to make CH3. I did the mechanism on this on another videotape. But as you can see, all three of these would give the same methyl ester. The way you would name this methyl ester is you would simply bisect it down the middle. If you bisect this down the middle, you would first name the group attached to the single bonded O, and that would be methyl. Then you would simply name the acid it came from, and that acid would be propanoic acid. So you would take off the suffix oic and add O8. So putting it all together, this would be methyl propanoate. Now, when you got this final product and you wanted to do an NMR on it, you would get three NMR signals. Upfield, at about 1.2 ppms, you would get a triplet. Why is it a triplet? Because these protons are next to a carbon with two H's. This CH2 would come in, well, if it's next to a carbonyl, it comes in around 2.0. But here's a carbonyl um, next to an O, so a little bit more than 2.0. It, it would come in maybe around 2.3 in that ballpark. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get this, and this is going to come in as a quartet. So that quartet would be about 2.3. And then finally, the most downfield signal, where would that be about? Well, if it was just a CH3 next to an O, it would be about 3. Yeah. But this is next to a carbonyl and an O, so it would be about 3.4. Okay. So I would expect downfield, downfield, to see a 3.4 ppm singlet. So you get a singlet, a triplet, and a quartet for methyl propanoic. Wow. If I did a carbon-13 analysis, since there's four different carbons, I would get four different carbon-13 signals. And finally, if I did an IR spectra on it, I would see the carbonyl group come in around 17, 20, 17, 30 in that ballpark. I hope this helps. And as you can see, I've done three main things here. I've done the chemical reaction, I did the nomenclature, and I did the chemical analysis that you would do that or the laboratory analysis that you would do to be able to analyze these using spectroscopy techniques. All right, I hope this helps. I it put this does, in study Dr. Group. Romano. Thank you so much. And my friend Esther has a friend named Josh, and I'm going to see him a little later today. You know Josh, too, I think, Dr. Romano. I do know Josh. He was our favorite waiter. And Josh, this is a shout-out to you, who is a waiter here in Virginia, and I promised to make a video for him. Um, he works at a restaurant called Stein Helpers. I wish he taught organic chemistry. I would give him, I would fire the instructor that we have now and use Josh. But at any rate, good day to you. Bye-bye. Okay, Dr. Romano, good day to you, sir. Thanks for the help.